to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of the temptation of Jesus Christ as found in Matthew chapter 4. All of us taste, face temptation every day usually. How do you overcome that temptation as a Christian? Today we're going to look to the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and give three ingredients to overcome temptation. We're so glad that you've joined us for our Bible study today. If you don't have your Bible readily available, we want you to pause for just a minute, go get your Bible, locate it, and let's have it out and ready as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study today. Friend, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by Christians, individual Christians, and members of the churches of Christ, congregations of the Lord's body in your area. The Lord's church would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly, whether that be for Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, whenever it may be, they, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who want to know God better, who love people, who, who want to help others know the truth of God as well, and they'd be happy to sit down and open up God's Word with you. In a kind and loving way, they'd be happy to study God's Word. If you've got questions about salvation, the church, worship, Christian living, you'll find people there who'd be happy to give a Bible answer for why we do what we do. Friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your desire to know God and His Word better. We have Bible study questions, transcripts, audio lessons, video lessons, a wide variety of good Bible study material that help you to know God's plan better for you. If you'd like to have a copy of our study on the Gospel of Matthew or any book in the Old or New Testament as well as a variety of topical studies, we'd be happy to make that available to you free of charge. Just log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our various materials free of charge. And if you need a DVD or a CD of that, we'll even send that to you in the mail free of charge. Just fill out a free media request form, give us your information, we can send that to you as a download or we can send you a DVD or CD as well. And we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app for smartphones and the respective play stores. Great way to keep up with what we're doing and get Bible study material in our fast-paced world today. Friend, as I think about my life, as you think about your life, every one of us faces temptation every day. Temptation is a reality that I've got to deal with every day that I wake up. And that temptation is something we struggle with. Matthew 26, verse 41, Jesus said, The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is often weak. We realize that our fight is against the temptations often that we face and that temptation begins inside of me. James chapter 1 verses 13 through 15, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. My desires, the things that entice me, the things that allure me, that's a temptation and a reality I've got to deal with every day. And the Bible says, blessed is the one who overcomes that temptation. James chapter 1, verse number 12. And let's realize today, as we introduce the idea of the temptation we face, 
Friend, let's realize the tempter, the devil, is actively plotting to tempt me and to tempt you with our own weaknesses. How do I know that? I want you to hear what Jesus said to one of his closest followers, Simon. Luke chapter 22, verse 31, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith would not falter or fail. Listen to those words. Satan desires to have you. Just like Satan was actively plotting to tempt Peter, Simon, so today he's actively looking for chinks in our armor to also tempt us. Th think about Job. Job was an upright, blameless man, one who feared God and shunned evil, and Satan entered the picture. Temptation after problem, after difficulty, catastrophe, sickness, disease, death, all of that at the hand of Satan, trying to tempt Job to curse God and give up on his faith. You see, the Bible puts it this way. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And friend, not only do I need to realize this is a, a problem that I face, but great men of God in the Bible have also had to face the problem of temptation. David faced it. Temptations that he had. Bathsheba, the pride that went along with numbering the people. Job faced it sorely. His children... Uh, the devil throwing everything he had at him, his wife telling him to curse God and die, the illness that he got, losing everything in one fell swoop. Peter faced it. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, faced temptation. And so since temptation is a reality that every one of us is going to have to deal with every day, we've got to learn not to avoid temptation but rather to overcome it. How do I deal with temptation in a God-approved way that I can be victorious over the temptation? And so today we want to look in our study of the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, we want to look at the temptation of Christ and learn three ingredients that are given in this context to help us overcome our temptation. I want you to take your Bible and let's read the context of Matthew chapter 4 beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones should become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hand. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I'll give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. When I think about everything Jesus went through here, again, we see three ingredients, three things that will help us to overcome temptation in our life. But hear this first. I don't have to give in to temptation. I don't have to give in to the devil's ploys. I have the, through Christ, I have the ability, I have the power, 
and I am able to say no. I think sometimes we don't understand that. I think sometimes we approach it with a defeatist type of attitude that the temptation is so strong nobody could ever overcome. That's not true. Jesus was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Meaning this, it was a real temptation. He faced it. He overcame it. And friend, we can do the same. You don't have to give in to temptation. You can and must overcome that. Listen to God's words to Cain. All the way back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. God said this to Cain. Sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you. But now listen to the encouraging part. You must master it. I can master. I can overcome temptation. And so here are the three ingredients. How do you overcome temptation like the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Number one, be prepared to overcome temptation. Jesus was prepared. He spent time preparing for the temptation. Uh, think about Matthew 4, verse number 2. When Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. He was led up in the spirit by the wilderness. Mark tells us he was there with the wild beast. He was in prayer. Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting, separated from the things of the world to focus solely on the spiritual. What do I learn from Jesus doing this? You've got to, you've got to prepare ahead of time to overcome temptation. Meaning this, a lot of times people are caught off guard. I didn't know this temptation was going to happen. I wasn't ready for that. Well, friend, the Bible tells us we're going to face it. I've got to prepare ahead of time when that temptation comes. How am I going to ward it off? Am, am I going to, what am I going to do to prevent? It's like it slips up on us. I didn't know it was going to happen. My friend, Jesus wasn't that way. He spent time preparing to overcome temptation. What's that mean? Luke 2 verse 49 Jesus was about the Father's business. When, 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 when the crowd, when, when his parents lost him, when he was in the temple and they kind of scolded him and said, in essence, didn't you know we were looking for you? Where were you? And Jesus said, did you not know I must be about my Father's business? I need to spend time preparing to overcome temptation by focusing on the Father's business, by giving my heart to what God wants me to do. His Word, his plan, His work, His way of doing things, giving my heart to the Father and His business is going to help me overcome temptation. To overcome temptation, I can never stop growing as a Christian. Luke 2 verse 52, it is said of Jesus, and He increased in wisdom, stature, in favor with God, and in favor with man. Jesus grew in every way imaginable, intellectually, physically, spiritually, Morally, every way you can imagine. Socially, Jesus continued. His life was a continual process of growth. And friend, if I'm going to overcome temptation, I've got to do the same thing. You can never, if you get stagnant, if you grow stale, if you become lukewarm, the devil has got you right where he wants you when temptation comes. Instead of becoming stagnant, I need to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. I need to, like a baby, desire the pure milk of the Word that I may grow thereby. I need to launch out into the deep, Matthew chapter 4, and continue to know God and His Word better. Thirdly, Jesus spent time preparing for temptation, and I know that by how He responds every time. When the devil took those rocks and said, you've been without food all this time, Turn these rocks, prove to me. And the if is, prove to me you're the Son of God by commanding these stones to become bread. Was Jesus hungry? You bet he was. If you're the Son of God, cast yourself down from the temple. If, what do you mean if? I am. But I don't have to prove that to you. Um, every time Jesus said, when, when he faced temptation, every time Jesus' mind automatically went to the sword of the Spirit and Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. How did Jesus know that? Well, friend, he, like me and you, he had the scroll. 
He had to study. He had to read God's word. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. For Jesus to respond just like that, he had to be so well equipped and acquainted with the word of God that it just naturally flowed out. When the temptation arose, his immediate thought was, what does God say? Man shall not live by bread alone. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're not going to tempt me with that because that's not most important. God's word is more important. So spend time with the word of God, preparing yourself to overcome temptation. And of course, naturally, to overcome temptation, you've got to make sure that you are a child of God, that you're living faithfully as a child of God. I need God's help to overcome temptation. I can't do it alone, but with Christ, through Christ, I can do all things, Philippians 4 verse 13. And so I've got to make sure I'm a Christian, that I've obeyed the gospel, that I did what Christians did in the book of Acts to become members of God's church, repent and be baptized, for the remission of your sins, God will add you to His church. Acts 2 verses 38 through 47. And then my friend, make sure you're a faithful child of God. That you're trying every day to walk in the light. 1 John 1 7 and to walk in newness of life. And you know, as a Christian, have you ever asked yourself, not if, but when this temptation comes, what am I going to do? When I'm tempted with this lust of the flesh, when I'm tempted with this pride of life, when I'm tempted of this lust of the eyes, what am I going to do when that happens? Have you thought ahead and prepared ahead for when that comes so that it doesn't catch you off guard? Jesus was in the wilderness fasting 40 days and 40 nights. He prepared himself with the Word of God. My friends, we need to prepare not for if it happens, but when it happens, how am I going to deal with it? How am I going to respond to the Word of God? Secondly, second ingredient to overcome temptation is to realize how the tempter works. You know, if I can know ahead of time, if you're in a battle, you're in a war, you're in a battle, if you can know your opponent's strategy. Just take, for example, some type of sport. Let's say we could take a, a football game. If you know your opponent's, why do teams spend so much money on analysts and defensive analysts and all of this? They want to know the strategy of their opponent so they can ward it off before it even happens. They can be ready for it. Friend, if I can realize ahead of time how Satan works, I'm going to be so much more equipped, well equipped, to overcome temptation. How does he work? Same way he always has. All the way back to the garden. Lust the flesh, lust the eyes, pride of life. Those are the ways Satan worked in the Bible. Those are the ways he worked in the temptation of Jesus. That's how he works in my life and yours today. Let's consider those three in this temptation. Satan approaches Jesus first with the lust of the flesh. Jesus had been without food in the wilderness. Satan knew that. If you're the Son of God, I know you're hungry. If you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Is that a real temptation? If you'd been without, if you hadn't had a whole lot to eat, I guarantee you, that'd have been a real temptation. Did Jesus have the power to do that? Absolutely. You see, Satan plays dirty. When you're at your lowest, when, you, when that temptation may hit you the worst, when you may feel that the most, it's when he lays it out there before you. Satan uses our own, even our own abilities against us sometimes. You're the son of God. Prove it. Could Jesus have done that? Did he have that ability and that gift and that talent? Absolutely. You see, Satan tries to make us focus on the physical not the spiritual. Boy, a big hamburger right now. Imagine how good that would have taken. Turn these stones to bread. No. Jesus, how did, how, did he, how did he deal with the lust of the flesh? Jesus put things in their proper perspective. It's not the flesh that comes first. It's the spirit. Listen to what he said. In De Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, and he says this. I'm not going to do that, and here's why. Man 
shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus, in essence, said, if I starve here, the Word of God comes first. I'm not giving in to this temptation because spiritual things take precedence over physical things and I've got to make sure I've got things in the right priority. Friend, that lust of the flesh may appeal to you and me. It may, may not be food. It may be other passions, other desires, other things of the flesh that are impulses. I've got to realize that the physical cannot run out ahead of and lead the spiritual. Spiritual things have got to take precedence over the lust of the flesh. Then Satan deals with the pride of life. Satan kind of gives our pride a religious facade, if we could use that word. Matthew chapter 4 verses 5 through 7 takes him up on the pinnacle of the temple, the holy city, shows him everything there. All this I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus doesn't give in to that. S Satan kind of gives our pride that religious facade. He tries to make us, uh, if you're the Son of God, throw yourself down. For the Scripture says God will give His angels charge over you. He'll not let you even hurt your foot, as it were. Jesus, He doesn't give in to that. He's trying to make Jesus prove God's care. Satan tries to even make Jesus do things that will be harmful to himself to prove that God cares for him. Satan even tries to twist the scriptures here. Friend, please hear me well today. Do not think to yourself that Satan isn't acquainted with the Bible. He knows it well enough to twist it and to use it against you, just like he tried to do with the Lord and Savior. Up on that pinnacle, cast yourself down. God said, God said he'll take care of you. God said you wouldn't hurt your foot if you did it. Prove that me you're the Son of God. Pride of life. Could Jesus have jumped off of there and proven? Yeah, but it wouldn't have been what was important. Listen to what Deuteronomy, what did Jesus refer to? How did Jesus deal with the pride of life? Deuteronomy 6, 16. You shall, Jesus said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. We're not, we're not test God. That's not, Jesus said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute now. This, we're not proving God. God's proven Himself. God is beyond needing to do that. We are not going to try to get out there. We, we don't have to say, God, if you're God, you better do this in my life. Or I, or I, no, no. That's not. The pride of life sometimes tries to get us to get out ahead of ourselves, to get out ahead of God, to, to take that pride and try to say, well, if God loved me, He'd do this, or God wouldn't let this. Friend, that's just not... You're not going to tempt the Lord your God. Don't, don't try to set up God to fall. That, that's not the way it's going to work. God doesn't need me to prove He's God. He's God regardless. God needs me to trust and follow Him. And pride always goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Thirdly, you then have the lust of the eyes. Takes Jesus up, shows Him all the kings of, the, of this world and their power. And He says to Jesus, all these things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. Lust of the eyes, one of the greatest ways Satan works today. Satan makes us want this old world. He makes us look at the world. He makes us want it. He makes us want to make deep roots and attachments here. It's, listen, Satan, just like with Jesus, Satan promises us things he cannot and will not deliver on. All these things, all, all that you see here of these kings and the power, I'll give you. He didn't have that power. Satan tries to make us put the world and the kingdoms of this world and the ideologies of this world and the principles of this world before everything else so that in essence we are falling down and worshiping him. How do you deal with worldliness and the lust of the eyes? Listen to what Jesus said from Deuteronomy 6. Verse number 13, you shall worship the Lord your God and Him only shall you serve. Jesus in essence said, get behind me, Satan. God comes first. His plan comes first. This old world's not going to last anyway. I know you don't have that power. I'm going to worship God and serve Him only. And that's what really matters. And so when you think about overcoming temptation, 
Not only do I need to be prepared for it, not only do I need to uh, realize how Satan works, but you need to realize the reward of overcoming temptation. I want to read to you from Luke chapter 4, and I want you to see there's a great value in overcoming temptation as well. Luke's account says in Luke chapter 4, verse 13, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Friend, the reward is it makes us stronger in the faith. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 3. The reward is the devil will eventually give up and flee from us Luke chapter 4 verse 13, until he finds an opportune time. But the ultimate reward is, and listen carefully, if I overcome temptation, heaven is going to be my ultimate reward. Friend, don't get caught up in the things of this life. Don't get caught up in the lust of the eyes. There may be immediate impulse gratification, but it's not going to last. Don't get caught up in the pride of life. Look at me and how big and bad. No. Don't get caught up in the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Keep your focus on heaven. The Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 12 verse 1, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Listen to this. This is what we're talking about today. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily ensnare us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame. And watch now, has sat down at the right hand of God. Friend, if you prepare for temptation, if you realize how the devil works, and if you understand the rewards of overcoming it, you're way ahead of most people in dealing with the problem of temptation, just like our Lord was. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study today. Please join us next time as we study more from the Gospel of Matthew. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your smartphone.